In the previous lecture, we have studied about non-determinism in Turing machines, and we have seen how non-deterministic Turing machines work. And we have also seen the difference between non-deterministic and deterministic Turing machines. Now, in this lecture, we will be seeing if non-deterministic Turing machines and deterministic Turing machines are same in their computational power. So, here we have a theorem which says every non-deterministic Turing machine has an equivalent deterministic Turing machine. So, if we are able to prove this theorem, then we can say that the power of non-deterministic as well as deterministic Turing machines are the same. And by power, I mean that the class of languages that they are able to recognize or decide are the same. So, the speed in which the computation takes place may be a bit different in both of these. But, we are talking about their power of computation, which means the class of languages that they can recognize. Alright, so let us see if we can prove this theorem. In order to prove this theorem, we have to show that for every non-deterministic Turing machine, there is an equivalent deterministic Turing machine. So here is the way we can prove it. We have to show that given a non-deterministic Turing machine, I'll call it N, we have to show how to construct an equivalent deterministic Turing machine, which I will call D. And we have to see that if N accepts on any branch, the D will accept. That means if the non-deterministic Turing machine will reach an accept state on any of the branches, the deterministic Turing machine will also accept. So why do we call any branch? Because in the last lecture we have seen that in case of non-deterministic Turing machines, there are different possibilities even for a single input. So we have different branches in our computational history. And then if N holds on every branch without an accept, then D will hold and reject. So, if the non-deterministic Turing machine will hold on every branch without going to an accept, then the deterministic Turing machine, which is equivalent to this, will hold and it will reject. Now, let us see what is the approach that we need to follow in order to do this. So, here is the approach. First, we have to simulate the non-deterministic Turing machine N. And we have to simulate all the branches of computation. We know that the non-deterministic Turing machine will have many branches. So we have to simulate all of its branches. And we have to search for any way N can accept. So we have to search through all those branches and see if any of the branches of N will lead to an accept. Now let us look at the computational history of a non-deterministic Turing machine in order to understand how we can actually accomplish this task. So here we have the computational history of a non-deterministic Turing machine. So this is an example of the computational history. And what is computational history? I already taught you in the previous lecture. And these bubbles over here, they represent the configurations of each and every step that is happening. We know that in non-deterministic Turing machines, since there are different possibilities for even one single input, so we have many branches like this and hence the computational history turns out to be a tree like this. So these bubbles represent the configuration which I have not written inside. Now we see that there are some numbers that I have given. So let's see what are these numbers. So these numbers represent the branches of a certain node. So here we have a node which represents a configuration and here it has two possibilities. So I represent the first possibility with 1 and the second with 2. So in the same way, this node has three possibilities. So I call it 1, 2 and 3. And this one has 2, 1, 2 and so on. So here if we see this one has four possibilities. So it is 1, 2, 3, 4. Now why I have given these numbers is because we want to know which of the branch will lead to an accept. So we need to keep track of which is the branch that we have taken. So as we know that we are trying to find out the branch which leads to an accept because we are trying to design a deterministic Turing machine which is equivalent to the non-deterministic Turing machines. So here these are the branches and here some of the branches they may just die out during the computations or some of the branches may even lead to infinity. So we know that some branches can lead to infinity as well and some branches may also lead to accept. So let's say that this was an accepting state. So I have written a number over here. This represents the branch or the certain path that we took in order to reach here. So it's written 221214. So from the starting node, we first took the second path 2, then again we took 2 here, then 1, then 2, 
then 1 and then 4. So that is what I have mentioned here 2, 2, 1, 2, 1, 4. This is the path that we took in order to reach here. So we see that every path or every node will have a particular path number like this which will show the way which leads to that particular node. So we can have many combinations of path numbers like this. So it says here a path to any node is given by a number. So like this which I have shown here and then search the tree looking for accept. We keep searching the tree until we find an accept state or until it dies out. So now we have to look at the search orders. How are you going to search this tree? Now you must have already studied about the searching techniques or searching algorithms that we have or the traversal algorithms that we have. So two most commonly used searching or traversal algorithms are depth first search and breadth first search. Now we have to see whether we will be using depth first search or breadth first search. So in DFS what happens is that you keep searching for a node in just one direction. Like for example you start from here, you go here and then next here and then here and it goes on like that in just one direction and when it finishes that it comes and searches for the next one. But we are not going to use this depth first search. Why? That is because we already said that some of the paths may lead to infinity in this non-deterministic Turing machines. We have already studied about that. Now if you use depth first search and if you choose a branch which leads to infinity, you will just be searching to infinity and you will never finish your search. So instead of that what we will be using is the breadth first search or BFS. So in BFS what happens is you come to the node and then you search the two children of the nodes left and right and again left and right and so on. So in that way that makes it a better searching algorithm to be used in this process. So we will be using BFS. Now to examine a node what we have to do perform the entire computation from scratch and then the path numbers tells us which of the many non-deterministic choices to make. We have to perform the entire computation from the beginning and then the path numbers will tell us which of the many non-deterministic choices to make. So here we have path numbers like this. So every node will have a path number like this. So this path number will tell us which of the choice to make. So now let's see how we can implement this. So in order to implement the above steps, that means in order to construct a deterministic Turing machine for a given non-deterministic Turing machine, this is what we have to do. So this is what the deterministic Turing machine will look like. So here we have the Turing machine's finite state control and here we are using three tapes. We already studied the concept of multi-tape Turing machines in the previous lectures. So we are going to apply that technique over here. So here we are going to have three tapes. So the equivalent deterministic Turing machine for a non-deterministic Turing machine will have three tapes like this. So the first tape is known as the input tape and this is the initial tape which is never modified. So this is the tape in which the tape alphabets are stored of the non-deterministic Turing machine. That means this is the original tape that we have from the non-deterministic Turing machine and this will never be modified. We are just keeping this in order to know what are the initial tape symbols. Then we have the simulation tape. The simulation tape is used like the tape of the deterministic Turing machine to perform the simulation. So the simulation tape will act like the tape for the deterministic Turing machine. Alright and then we have the address tape. So the address tape is used to control the BFS or the breadth first search. It tells which choices to make during a simulation. So I already told you in the previous slide that we are going to use BFS or breadth first search and we also saw the path numbers that each nodes are having. So that will be stored in this address tape and this address tape will tell us which of the choices to make in order to reach an accept state or to continue this computation until we either reach an accept state or until everything holds. Now we understood how all this technique works. Now as we have understood this we are in a position to write the algorithm of how it actually works. So let's see how we can write the algorithm for this. So here I have the algorithm for constructing a deterministic Turing machine for a given non-deterministic Turing machine. Alright, so initially we have tape 1 which contains the input which is the input tape which I showed you in the previous diagram and then tape 2 and tape 3 are empty. So the simulation tape which is tape 2 and the address tape which is tape 3 are empty in the beginning. First step that we have to do is copy tape 1 to tape 2. 
So the entire contents of tape 1, that is the entire contents of the input tape will be copied to tape 2 which is the simulation tape and then we run the simulation. So we run the simulation from the beginning. So I have shown you how it works. So in that process it will be run and use tape 2 as the tape. So the tape means the when we are running a Turing machine there will be a main tape that will be used. So tape 2 will be used as the main tape for this process and then when choices occur that is when non-deterministic branch points are encountered consult tape 3. Now we know that we are dealing with a non-deterministic Turing machine and we know that it will have many choices or many branches because that is a property of non-determinism. So whenever we encounter such choices we will consult tape 3. So in tape 3 we can store the path or the choice that we are going to take. So that will be stored in tape 3 and this is when the role of tape 3 comes into play. Tape 3 contains a path. Each number tells which choice to make. So just like I showed you the first diagram, there is a path number for every node. So those will be stored in the tape 3 and each of the number will specify which particular path or which particular branch are we going to choose at a particular moment of execution. So that will be done by the help of tape 3 and run the simulation all the way down the branch as far as the address path goes or the computation dies. So we have to run this all the way until the path is there or until the computation dies off and after that we can try the next branch. So we can try the next branch after one branch is done and if you don't find the accept in that branch and increment the address on tape 3. So we will increment the address on tape 3 so that we can take the next path and we repeat this entire process. And how long do we keep repeating? If accept is ever encountered then hold and accept. So in the course of this execution if you ever encounter an accept state then we hold and we say that it accepts. Or if all the branches reject or if all the branches die out then hold and reject. So if all the branches rejects or die out then we hold and we say that that particular string that was fed in is rejected. So this is how deterministic Turing machine is constructed from a non-deterministic Turing machine and this is how it will work. So we need to use three tapes and we have to check all the choices or all the branches that we have until we encounter an accept or until we find that it is all rejecting and dying out. Now let us go back and look at the theorem and the proof that we wrote down in order to see if we could do all the things that was written over there. So this is the theorem that we had and this is the approach that we followed which we have just explained. We simulated the non-deterministic Turing machines and we simulated all of its branches and then we were searching for any way that the non-deterministic Turing machine can reach and accept. So that is what we tried and that is what we did. So we already said that if the non-deterministic Turing machine accepts on any of the branch then the deterministic Turing machine will accept. That is what we saw in the algorithm and then if non-deterministic Turing machine holds on every branch without accepting then the deterministic Turing machine will halt and reject. So we were able to do this and hence we have shown that for a non-deterministic Turing machine we were able to construct an equivalent deterministic Turing machine and hence we have proved our theorem. So for every non-deterministic Turing machine there is an equivalent deterministic Turing machine. So I hope that was clear to you. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.